Now that October has come and gone, we are right in the middle of the busiest season of the year, especially if you are a print on demand seller. Now, I definitely always love to suggest preparing for holiday sales well in advance, but the reality is there is still a lot of time to take advantage of making more profit and more sales during this time of year, but there are a few things you're going to want to make sure you do to get those increased profits. So in today's video, I'm really excited because I have some amazing tips to help you guys either double or triple your sales from last year and make even more profit this holiday season, this Q4. These are all strategies that I implement in my own business a lot of times all throughout the year, but I especially am paying attention to them towards the last few months of the year, which tend to be my most profitable and usually the most profitable for many other print on demand sellers. With so many people giving gifts this time of year, it just means that more products are being bought every single day. And that is a huge advantage if you are a print on demand seller. So let's just jump right into these tips. Now, this video was brought to you guys in partnership with Printify, who is my manufacturing production partner of choice during the really busy holiday season. It's really important to work with a production partner that you can really trust and you know they're going to get your products out to your customers in great quality and on time and with some of the lowest prices around. So that is why I've been using Printify for a long time. And I definitely think they are really just the best in the business if you are going to be selling print on demand products on a place like Etsy, I can't recommend them enough. So now let's get into this first tip. So my first tip for actually increasing your sales, getting more eyeballs on your products during the Q4 season is to run a sale in your shop. Now, there really are a couple different ways that you can choose to run a sale on a place like Etsy. And I'm going to share with you my favorite method for doing this. So one of the first things that you can just do for your products is you can just go into the run a sale section on Etsy and you can put either 10 or 20% off of your store or off certain products. Now, this definitely can get a boost in your sales. You can get more eyeballs on your products and you might make more sales than you usually see that way. But one thing that you have to keep in mind is that you are going to be making less profit on every single sale. Now, if you do kind of just use this as a temporary way to boost some of your listings and then only run that sale for a limited time, but the sales and the eyeballs that you got are going to help rank your products after that. However, there is another way that you can actually run sales that I think works a little bit better if you want to do this over a long period of time or you don't want to sacrifice your profit and that is just calculating the amount of profit that you want to make on an item so say you're aiming for that five dollar mark and then you are actually going to change the price so that with that 10 or 20 percent discount that you're going to be running you still are making that same amount of profit now you can totally figure out what that number is going to be for each individual profit but it's a lot easier to use some kind of calculator so i actually use the pricing calculator on sales samurai i'll also have them linked down below in the description and i have a video here on exactly how to calculate what your profit is going to be on every single item but sales generally are going to get have kind of a boost in your listings. They show up really prominently. When someone is looking for something on Etsy, they can see that there is a sale. And as kind of a bonus tip for running sales that just increases the conversion for people actually purchasing your item is going to be running limited time sales. So when a sale shows up on Etsy, it is going to tell the customer how much time is left in that sale. So if you have a one day sale going, it's going to say, oh, this item is only on sale for eight more hours. However, if you just put the sale, maybe start on Monday and it's going to end on Saturday, it's going to say, oh, you have maybe six more days to purchase this item at this price. So it doesn't give that urgency to the customer. So one thing that you can do is even if you plan to have this item on sale every single day, you you can manually go in and just start a sale for those items at the beginning of each day. That way there's going to be more urgency for the customer to buy the item while it's on sale, leading to more conversions. So that is just one way to increase your sales this holiday season. Now, the next tip that I have for you to increase your sales during the holiday season is actually to incorporate more different product types 
in your shots. Now, I definitely am not a big fan of spreading yourself really thin and trying to just have a few items from a ton of different product categories, but I think it's really beneficial to add a few different items to your shop and really focus on those. Now, during the holiday season, I think you should especially put focus on some really great cold winter or Christmas themed products, those can be a great addition to your shop. In fact, I actually have an entire video listing some of the best products to add to your shop during Q4. Now, a lot of times we put a lot of our focus in just uploading a ton of different t-shirts to our print on demand shops. T-shirts definitely are my best seller still, but expanding into some other products can lead to even more sales, especially in the winter time. Now, I have found that a lot of times while t-shirts are selling a ton during the summer, the amount of hoodies and sweatshirts that I'm selling during the colder months definitely ticks up quite a bit. So if you haven't ever put any of your designs on hoodies, sweatshirts, crewnecks, I definitely would recommend doing that. Now, if you're a little nervous of converting every single listing and design that you already have uploaded into a hoodie or a sweatshirt version, start with only taking the products that have already sold for you. So if you know this design does really well on tank tops or t-shirts, put it on a hoodie as well. You've kind of validated that that design is going to do well. So it's an easy addition to your shop to just put that on a hoodie or a sweatshirt. And you can even do that same thing with something like a mug that makes a fabulous gift during Christmas time. If you have a t-shirt design that is one of your best sellers or it's even just sold a few times for you, take that same design and put it on a mug. It's really simple to do that. But that way you are just increasing the amount of products you have, the amount of eyeballs, and you're not missing out on those sales for someone who is specifically looking for a hoodie or a mug to give as a gift when you maybe only have t-shirts right now. Now, my next tip for increasing your sales in your print on demand shop actually goes right hand in hand with that last one. And this is probably the most important tip. If you don't get anything else out of this video, I definitely want to focus on this. And this really is probably the most crucial thing in your print on demand business any time of year. And that is the amount of sales that you're getting in your shop is almost directly correlated with the number of products that you have listed. If you only have a few products listed in your shop, you're not getting a ton of eyeballs on your items. People aren't making a lot of purchases, but with adding more and more products and listings to your shop, the chances that someone is going to find something that they really connect with and purchase that goes up so much. Stores that really make full-time incomes for themselves, they typically have in the thousands of products range. So if you're wondering why you aren't getting clicks, you aren't getting views, it could be that you just have too few products. Now, if you have less than 100 products, I wouldn't even worry about making more sales until you have reached that 100 product threshold. But I definitely don't recommend stopping there. You are just going to get more sales and make more profit if you can keep increasing that number. Now, this can seem really daunting when you are trying to get to a milestone like 500 listings added to your shop. So I find it really helpful to break that down into daily upload goals that I know I can reach every single day. Now, this number is going to be different for other people. For a long time, my daily upload goal was about 10 products a day, which was a little bit ambitious, but I definitely know that that is what really helped skyrocket some of my print on demand stores to be very successful. But I think that choosing somewhere between maybe two to 10 products a day is a really good goal. So if you want to commit to uploading four unique products every single day, if you can stick with that, pretty soon you're gonna have a substantial amount of products in your shop leading to even more sales. This truly is one of the secrets of print on demand is just getting more products uploaded. Now they definitely have to be well researched and well designed as well. I wouldn't suggest just downloading a pack of 500 random t-shirt designs and uploading those and calling it a day. You still do have to put the work into actually making sure these are good designs that people want to buy but by getting more of them out there, you are just increasing your chances of making even more sales this holiday season. Now, this next tip is especially important if you are a seller on Amazon Merch, 
but this definitely could be helpful if you haven't thought about this before, if you even are a seller on Etsy or some other print on demand site. And that is going to be increasing your prices. Now, it seems kind of counterintuitive that increasing your prices could lead to more sales in your print on demand shop, but I have seen this actually work in not only my business, but other people's businesses as well. A lot of times, especially in Merch by Amazon, sellers are trying as hard as they can to make those initial sales so they can be tiered up. And this could be the case for you on Etsy. Maybe you don't even care about making profit. You just want to sell your products for the bare minimum so that your store can be validated with some sales. So we put our prices kind of at the bottom of the barrel, either $13 or $14. Now, even though this seems like someone, if they could get the same product for a lower price, it makes sense that they would want to purchase that. However, we know this kind of goes against the psychology of shopping online. A lot of times when we have those really low prices on our items, people are automatically going to equate that with being a lesser quality, especially if they see a ton of this same item being sold for a more normal price, like $18, $19, $20, $25. If they see one that is priced around $13, a lot of times they're automatically going to think that that one is maybe cheaper, it's different, when it could be exactly the same. People are very comfortable going with that middle of the road pricing. So we definitely don't want to pay the highest price that's out there. We want to feel like we're getting a deal, but we become a little bit skeptical when we see that this price is so much lower than everyone else. There must be something wrong with it. We can't really figure out why. So we want to get the price that's kind of in the middle of the range. Now, if you don't know what that is, I definitely would suggest looking around on Etsy, on Amazon, seeing what most of the other listings are pricing their items at and kind of following suit. Now I have had other students and commenters tell me that they had their items priced as low as they can go and they ended up switching that price to a more normal thing like $19.99 and they found that their products almost immediately started selling a lot better. So this is not going to hurt your sales at all. If anything, it could potentially really boost your sales if you'd been trying to price everything at that really, really low price. Now, my next tip to actually increase your sales and really get more eyeballs on your listings is to take advantage of some direct traffic and bring some of your own eyeballs to your print on demand shop. Now, one way you can do this is by creating some kind of social media presence. It is not too late this year to even start this for this Q4 to bring some of your own direct traffic this way, but this is also something that you could start right now. And by the time next Q4 rolls around, you will have a social media account that has a year under its belt and possibly could have really, really grown and could be bringing you some amazing traffic. Now, personally, I think some of the best places to actually bring social media traffic to your print on demand shops are going to be Facebook and Instagram. Now, personally, I love and use Instagram for my print on demand shops. I just find it's really easy to find the people who want to engage with your kind of content and bring them to your listings. Now, I have a couple other videos about this on my channel. But basically, the way that I have found a lot of success with creating a kind of Instagram account is you're going to kind of become a very specific niche clothing brand. So this doesn't necessarily work super well if you have a general shop and you just want to post a bunch of everything. But if you're going the route where your print on demand store is more niche focused, you have a specific demographic that you're targeting, you can start posting mock-ups of your items to a place like Instagram and then interacting with and following other accounts of people who are interested in that kind of content. So say you were really into doing jigsaw puzzles and your print on demand shop had a bunch of different content all geared towards people who love puzzling and want to buy different kind of puzzle type content. That is a big hobby for people. So you create an Instagram account all about puzzling and you are showcasing all of the different items in your shop that have to do with puzzling. Now it's going to be really easy to find people who are interested in that same stuff because you can just go to some of the biggest puzzling accounts and look and see who are those people that are following them. You can comment on their pictures. You can start liking them. You can follow those different people and that's going to lead them to looking at your account, seeing all all of the really cool puzzling type items that you are selling in your print on demand shop. Now, if they really like your content, they're going to follow you there and your profile is going to be linked to 
your shop. So if they're ever interested in one of the items that you share there, they will be able to follow you. And Instagram, it really is kind of just a free extra way to advertise. On Etsy or Amazon, we can pay to have them show our items to other people through ads. But on Instagram, everyone who has chosen to follow you is a warm lead that is interested in your type of content and they're going to see it show up on their feed totally for free. Now, this can get a lot more complicated. There's definitely a lot of things you'd have to think about with starting a social media account for your print on demand business. So let me know if that is something you'd be interested in seeing a whole video about. Let me know down in the comments and maybe I can make a whole tutorial and what to think about for setting up your own social media presence to generate more sales and more traffic to your shop. Now, Q4 really is such an exciting time for so many new print on demand sellers because this a lot of times is the first time that you're seeing real traction in their business. I remember my first Q4, I was completely floored with how many sales I was getting. While it was just a few before that, during the months of November and December, that really ramps up. So if you feel like you've been hearing crickets before now, just keep doing what you're doing, keep uploading products, and I guarantee that you're going to see more traction in the next month or two. And if you want even more ideas of the types of products you should be adding to your shop right now, definitely check out this video next. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.